Hi, ladies. It's Christine from Blogging About Momming. I am on here today to share with you five ways to balance your life as a mom and a blogger. So, thought I'd talk a little bit about who I am. I'm a blogger. Wow, that's really a surprise, isn't it? I have two blogs, bloggingaboutmomming.com and a parenting blog at uh, crispymama.com. And I launched my Blogging About Momming blog this year, um, I think back in February, I believe. And I really wanted to help out other moms who are blogging. So my, my original intent was to help moms who only blog about blogging, but I got really passionate about helping moms in general, no matter what your niche is. So I've kind of changed my direction. So the name, unfortunately, I thought about rebranding, but we are where we are. So anyways, I'm a blogger. I've got two blogs. I'm also a virtual assistant. I run tinyrhinoservices.com and I help bloggers and moms. I do Pinterest management and I help out with some blogging tasks here and there. And that's usually just for mom bloggers because I really like working with moms. And I also do coaching and that goes along with kind of what I'm talking about today. I'm also a mom of two. I have two boys, ages one and four. I have a very busy, <laughs> busy family. So my boys are quite, let's just say they're very active. So they don't really stop much. I'm also a former project manager. I used to work for a company that, or an agency that made mobile applications. So I worked with clients like Nick Jr. on Million Dollar Projects that never launched, which was really frustrating. And I also worked with places like uh, Penguin Random House, Toys R Us, which is no longer here, um, and a, a few others. And I'm an organization nerd. I love spreadsheets. I love getting organized. It's kind of how I work. I'm, I'm, I have a very logical brain. And my spirit animal is a sea turtle. I just thought that was a fun little fact. I love them so much. Okay, so what I do, and we've kind of talked about this a little bit, but I like to help moms find balance. And when you find balance in your life, you get to feel more fulfilled. And in order to do that for a mom and a blogger, that can be quite challenging, especially if you have a day job or, you know, there's a million things that you do every single day. And that's what I help with. And there's not one solution that works for every mom. Every mom has unique circumstances. You know, some are single, some are in a marriage, some have five kids, some have one kid. You know, it's every mom is different. Some people have a day job. You know, it's there's so many different challenges in our lives, and, and there are probably an equal number of wonderful things in our lives, but being able to balance it all is really challenging. And of course, as I've mentioned, I work one on one with moms as well to help them find balance, kind of look at everything in their life, what are their pain points, and figure out how to solve them. So let's just jump right in. And we're gonna talk about setting priorities and goals. And this is your first step in balancing your life. And it's gonna really, really define how you focus every single day. And I wanted to get into a little bit about something that I learned about many, many years ago called the burner analogy. So think about your life like it's broken up into different categories. You have your health, your work, your family, and your friends. Now this is kind of a glorified way of displaying a pie chart. At any given point in your, in your life, these are gonna be, take up a certain amount of time. And it'll, especially for moms, be dependent on how old your children are. So I'll, I'll get into this a little bit more in just a second, but I think it's really important to call out how your life is segmented, for lack of a better word. How much time and energy do you have to spend to each one of these? <clears throat> Excuse me. And what I want you to do is actually look at this and determine how your life fits into these categories. And I want you to be honest. And here's why. There's only one you, <laughs> sorry. All right, your examples. So for people who have babies and toddlers, your balance is gonna be quite different. If you notice in number three, the family. So when it comes to actually balancing this out, think of you, you're one person. So you're, this all has to add up to like 100%. So when your kids are really, really young, 
you have to spend a lot of time with them. They can't just go off and play. They're not going to have play dates where they go over to someone's house. They're not going to have sleepovers. They are going to be depending on you almost 100% of the time. So your balance is probably very heavily with your family. So you spend 60% of your time with your family, maybe 20% on work, 10% on friends, and 10% on your health. But as your children get older, so if you have preschool or kindergarten kids, it can change a little bit because you're not with your kids 100% of the time. Um, so your family time is actually going to go down. So maybe you'll have more time to work. You'll have more time to focus on your health. And you can spend more time with friends. Um, and the same thing goes for, sorry, I'm covering this up here, uh, your school-aged kids. So you have even more time because kids are going to be in school. And this is, you know, these are all just really, really broad examples because your kids are going to be in school at certain times of the year. Then they're going to be home, but maybe they have summer camps, you know. So at any given time, your balance is actually going to be different. But the reason that I actually call this out is because there are a lot of bloggers out there who are moms who are just starting out or have been doing this for a long time, and they're comparing themselves to other bloggers. There are other bloggers who don't have kids, or if they have kids, they're older, or they have different circumstances. You have a certain amount of time and energy you can spend on each one of these. Sorry, it's taking forever to advance. Hello. And I'm sorry, I covered that. I didn't have time to do a run through of this, so sorry if I fudge up a little bit. Okay, uh, so of course, these will change over time. Okay, so we're gonna actually get into setting your priorities and goals. And the reason that we do this before we do anything else is because you need to clearly define what you want to do. What are your priorities and can you turn those into goals? Actionable things that you can do to reach your prior, to follow your priorities and reach your goals. So this is how I do it. You define your pain points. You list out everything that you're struggling with right now. Then you turn those pain points into priorities. And don't worry, I'll show you how to in just a minute. And once you have your priorities, you create goals to meet those priorities. And then you break up those, in, those goals into steps, actionable steps that you can take to reach your goals. So for example, for your pain points, maybe, and this is a very simple one, but <laughs> maybe you never have time to blog. You have a really hard time putting aside dedicated time just to blog, which is understandable with kids because kids. Your priority then would be to find time to blog. And your goal would be to, you know, for an example, you can work on your blog at least two hours a day. And the next thing is to find the steps. How do you make it so you have two hours a day to work on your blog? And this doesn't have to be in a two hour block. This can be broken up. You know, there's, there's a bunch of different ways you can, you can really break down your goals. So first, of course, you want to define how you're going to uh, define how you spend your time now. Outline, um, outline your schedule and see what you can move around to make this work and then actually implement it. Okay. The next thing you'll want to do is figure out how you can work with your kids. Your kids are, all, are not always going to be with you, but for a lot of us, they're with us almost 100% of the time unless they're sleeping. That's me. So when I say that you learn to work with your kids, I don't mean literally on your blog. That's a bad idea. Okay, so let's take a closer look at what I mean about this. We all spend so much time with our kids and we think we know them so well. And we do. We really, really do. We know their ticks. We know how, what they do to push our buttons. We know everything about them. But what I want you to do is take a closer look at your children. For every single one of your children, I want you to think about this. And this doesn't work so well when you have a baby because obviously babies don't have a whole lot that you can analyze. They're, they're babies. They just need you to take care of them, feed them, clean them, and make sure they get some sleep. So for those with babies, this one's not going to be as useful, but you can use this as they get older. So I want you to look at your kids as if you're a stranger. Picture yourself outside your house, looking inside of a window, not in a creepy way, just go with me here, as if you're outside looking in at you interacting with your child. What is your child doing? What kind of behaviors do they have? Are they, what are they you doing to get attention? What does that tell you about your child? What do they enjoy? 
There's a lot of different ways to look at this, but what I want you to do is really look for the deeper meaning. Think about how is your child seeking control and what does that mean? If your child is having a hard time letting you work, children and adults, no matter, no matter who you are, human beings want control. We want to be able to have free will. And if your child is tightly controlled by you, and I mean that in, not in a bad way, you know, we want to be able to have a schedule or routine, but if your child isn't allowed to participate in their lives, that's when there might be a problem. So if the reason it's so hard for them to let you work is because it's not within their control. They want to spend time with you. They want to, be, they want to know that they're important. So what you need to do is really think about, and we'll get into some more strategies in a minute, but your child wants to, they want to be loved. They want to know you. They want you to acknowledge them. They want to be a part of it. So it's completely understandable that if you're trying to work, you're being interrupted. You're being interrupted all the time. But what you need to do, and you know, it's hard in the short webinar to try and cover all of this, but you need to set boundaries. Boundaries are fantastic. So I, I use the example of my children, both of them, love to climb on me. And their favorite time is when I'm sitting down at the computer. And thankfully, my husband has them out right now. So they're not climbing on me while I talk to you guys. But it's really hard to, the way that I actually do this is I tell them, and I know this is really hard for my one-year-old to understand, but I have to put up the boundaries early so they understand. I tell them it's great to climb on me when we are playing but it is not okay to climb on me when I have my computer out. I need you to go do something else while you wait. That is a boundary. It's also a boundary I'm putting up for myself, what I am allowing. So the next thing is also to define the activities that your child loves. And with your new insights into why your child acts the way that he or she does, I want you to define a bunch of activities that you can do that you can do solo play with. So that could be crafts, it could be playing out on the deck while you work, you know, there, there's a million different things that you can do. And, you know, these will work to a certain point. You kind of have to work with how much tolerance your child has. Maybe your child can only solo play for 30 minutes. That's okay. That is a constraint you have to work within. However, you need to maintain that half an hour and set those boundaries and set, tell your child, I need you to play for 30 minutes or however long they can handle it. And I will be with you in just a minute. And then you can go and play with them or make them dinner or whatever it is that they're asking for. Okay, so uh, this is, I'm a big fan <laughs> and of being present with your kids. It's a, a kind of something that I talk about all the time. As I, as I said before, children want to be seen. They want to be understood. They want to be felt. They want to feel like they're loved. They wanna know that they have value as individuals, no matter how old they are. And yes, babies will have a hard time with this, but they wanna be, they wanna know they're important. That's why they cry. That's why they want your attention. So what I want you to do is spend time every single day being 100% present with your child. And I don't mean that you have to drop everything and go and play with them or whatever throughout the day all the time. This is setting aside dedicated time and we'll get into how to do that later. And the biggest thing about when you're present is to make eye contact. There's something that happens when you make eye contact with someone. And trust me, I am an introvert. I am not good at making eye contact. But when I make eye contact with my four-year-old, it's magic. He just lights up. It is absolutely amazing. This, this smile comes onto his face. So making eye contact really lets them know in a nonverbal language that you are there, that you see them. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as I mentioned before, control. Your child wants to feel in control. So when you're being present, what you can do is provide options. So these are things that you're actually okay with doing in that, at that moment. So instead of saying, what do you want to do now? You know, your child might want to go to the zoo, but you can't go to the zoo in a half an hour. So provide options that you know they love. Do you want to play a board game? 
Do you want to play with marbles? You know, they give them options that you can actually do and let them choose. Have them have control over what they do, but you set the boundaries around what those things are. And what you have to do is clearly define your boundaries and the timeframes. You're, and we'll get into time management later because that's a really big one. But it's all about over communicating with your child. If you think your child knows, you know, you have a routine down, you have to remind them every single time what your boundaries are, how long you're gonna work on something and how long you need them to go and do something. I actually use timers. Uh, my my four-year-old at least is learning about how to tell time. And so I use a digital countdown timer so that when the alarm goes off, he knows that's the time when I'm done. And if he comes and disturbs me, I say, has the alarm gone off? And he'll say no. And I'll say, okay, what can you do while you wait? Here are some options. And I apologize. We just moved to California a few months ago and I cannot believe the number of flies that we have in our house. Yes, we have a cat and we have two bunnies, but holy moly, I have never had flies like this. So I apologize. Okay. And again, I will say this is the hardest with babies. You know, there's, there's some people that I've, I've coached through this and it's really hard when you have babies, you really just have to work around when they sleep or when they're occupied uh, playing with something, you know, it's really hard. So I empathize, I have been there twice. Okay, so let's get a little bit more into asking for help. And this seems like a very, that seems like a no brainer, but it's way more than asking for a babysitter. And I have tons of ways that you can ask for help, but I will cover some of them. And, you know, I do, We'll, we'll talk about that later. Ignore me. All right. So this is about crafting your village. And I don't mean that, you know, when you think about your mom village, your, your, your mom tribe, or however you want to phrase it, all those coin phrases that you see everywhere. I don't mean build your village with mom friends. That's a part of it. But it's much bigger than that. And it's about respecting yourself and knowing when you need help. And in order to do this, you have to think creatively, think outside of the box. For a lot of us, and I'm just going to sidebar here just a little bit. For me personally, my family is nine hours away. So is my husband's. Now that we live in California, where they were about three or four hours away. But I have very few friends and that's, that's just how I am. I'm an introvert. I don't need that many friends, but I have very little help. And thankfully, I have a very supportive husband who helps me with my, you know, find time to blog and things like that, at least to a point. And I don't have money for babysitters. I don't. That is not in our budget. So I really have to think creatively about cost-effective ways or free ways to get help. Um, so here are some ideas. There is a thing called working playdates. So what you can do is find moms in your area or dads who work from home or who have a side hustle or something like that. And what you do is you have a play date where you trade off working. And the, these are fantastic because your kids get socialized and you don't feel guilty. You have an adult watching your kids at the same time and you can socialize with another adult when you're not working. It's, it's really awesome. And I will say it can be hard to find these, but you can go on meetup.com. You can look on Facebook groups and see if anyone's in your area. It's, you know, maybe there's a, a mom group in your area that you can actually ask. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the other thing which is similar is babysitter trades. So you find another mom in your area that is also working from home and you offer to watch their kids for three hours on one day. And then what happens is they'll watch your kids for three hours on a different day. So you're getting free babysitting basically. And you're also interacting with someone who has the same life goals basically. So the next one is a mother's helper. Now this, this, these do cost money generally, but mother's helpers are something that you can ask for in like uh, babysitting groups. See if anyone is a mother's helper. And what mother's helpers do is they're usually a young teenager who is learning skills to become a babysitter or to become a household manager or something like, or whatever it is they want to do. And what you can do with a mother's helper is they can either watch your kids and you can be in the same room. You don't have to completely trust this person, but they can at least distract your children and learn how to interact with them. So they, they are actually gaining skills 
or they can actually come over and do your laundry. They can do your dishes. They can do cooking. You know, these are young kids who are learning how to do all of this stuff. So you're teaching them and paying them just a little bit. So for in general, in my area, babysitters are generally about $25 an hour. Ugh. <laughs> for mother's helper, I've seen them anywhere from 10 to $15 an hour. So it's a lot cheaper. You're basically paying them for their time and they're being also becomes, being compensated by learning new skills. And when you're looking for mother's helper, another way you can do that is, do you have a niece or nephew? Do you have a neighbor? There's a, a bunch of different ways you can look for one. Okay. Next one is obvious, your spouse or partner. And we're not going to call this babysitting because they're, they're, they're watching their kids. But what, you, what, what I mean by this is, you know, this seems so obvious, but have them like I did right now. My husband took out my kids so I can talk to you. Ask for help. You're, even if your spouse is not supportive of your blog, they should be supportive of you. And if the blog is important to you, that's why they should help. That is all that matters. And of course, family and friends, same thing. And remember, family and friends aren't just babysitters. Maybe your mom or dad can come over and do laundry. And you know, I use laundry as an example a lot because it never ends. You should see my laundry over here, it's really bad. Just in a pile. Uh, obviously, babysitter daycare. Um, not gonna get into that because that's obvious. Uh, drop in daycare. So, this is something that I think a lot of moms don't know about. And what you do is you look in your area and see if there's any daycares that allow drop in. So, sometimes with these, you have to schedule it in advance. So, you'll say, I want my child to be watched for three hours on a Tuesday. And you just schedule it. But there are some also that you can drop off without notifying them. And you may have to call ahead to see if there's room, but this is a fantastic way to get last minute help. And it's very flexible. So say you have a budget and you don't have a lot of money to spend on daycare, but you want a few hours a week and you want it to be flexible. This is the way to go. Now, we're gonna get into some things that aren't about blogging or being a mom, because this is all about saving time and being efficient. Amazon, <laughs> especially if it's Prime. I know there are a lot of moms that kind of live on Amazon and I'm one of them, but it's all about what can you do to save time. And Amazon is a great place because they have so much stuff. And yes, not all, not everything on there is cheaper than if you just go to a store, but it is possible to just order just about anything on Amazon and you can even put it on subscribe and save. So you save money and it comes to you automatically. I do that with our bunny litter. We do it with cat food. You know, it just comes to my door every month and I don't have to worry about it. I love it. So save some time. Meal prep. This, and I'm sorry, these are very obvious, but they, there's so many ways that you can save time and money and find a balance in your life. And meal prep is one of them. So what you do is you plan out your meals for the week and you can do freezer meals. So you prep some meals and these are all over Pinterest. Prep your meals ahead of time so that all you have to do is throw them in a crock pot or your instant pot now. Um, and you're done save time, get it all done. All you have to do is set aside time, maybe one day a week and prep as much as you can. Cut those onions early and throw them in the fridge. You know, think of ways that you can be creative about how much time you can save on cooking food. I cannot believe how much time it takes to cook food throughout the week. If you actually sat down and timed how much time you spend planning, cook, prepping, cooking food, and then eating it, oh, it's so much time. So any, any way that you can actually cut down on that is golden. The other thing that I do, and I, I, I love this, especially if you're in the United States, I think this is worldwide, but all you have to do is look at your local city buy nothing group. And what this is, is a hyper local group where you can request things for free. It's your neighbors and yourself getting rid of stuff for free. I have gotten let me see. I, you know, if, if I need something, say I need a, I needed a lamp at one point and I didn't have time to go shopping and I really didn't have the money for it. So I just did an in search of on uh, my local Facebook group and I got four people saying they had lamps and they sent pictures. I chose one and I went and picked it up for free. I've also listed a bunch of stuff that I wanted to get rid of for free. So you're getting rid of your stuff, helping out a neighbor. And the reason I list this is because it just, it's a great resource and it can save you a lot of time and a lot of money. 
So just a, just a sidebar. So the, you, the way you do this is you can go on Facebook and look for buy nothing and then your city. And they're usually listed within a certain mile radius or within your city, depending on your population. So make sure you check them out. Hire a house cleaner. And again, this can be family. This can be your spouse. Get help cleaning. Cleaning takes a lot of time. Hire a gardener. Maybe you don't have time to mow your lawn or anything like that. Hire the local, you know, a neighbor to come and mow your yard or weed your garden. While I would love to have a green thumb, I do not. And, you know, I, I love being out in nature, but I kill every plant that I have. It's really kind of sad. So if I had the money, I would hire a gardener. And there are ways to do this, like finding a, a local teenager to come and mow your lawn or weed your garden for, for a lot cheaper. And so getting back into the blogging a little bit, get a blogging mentor. So there are a lot of people out there who really, really want to help other bloggers. Now, blogging mentors can be in the form of paid coaches. For a lot of us, that is not within our budget. But what you can do is start interacting with other bloggers that have more developed blogs than you. They have skill sets that you don't have that you want to develop. And I have a, a few blogging mentors, which, you know, I don't really call them mentors. They're more friends, but they're people that I can go to when I have questions. And they're actually really happy to help. People love sharing their knowledge. And a lot of the times, yes, that is paid. They want to get money for their time. And that's completely understandable. But I actually have a few mom bloggers that I mentor. And I don't call it mentoring. I just help them out when they have questions or they want to find out, you know, who's the best host? How do you pick a theme? You know, all the questions that you have. I like helping other moms. And while my time is limited, you know, there's, I, I like the fulfillment. I like the satisfaction of helping other moms like you. Okay. The next one is an accountability partner. So the way that these work is you find another blogger who is similar to you. And it's really helpful if they're in the same niche. And you partner up with them and you set goals together. Say you want to do one blog post a week. And what you do is you have your accountability partner check in on you. They help you stay accountable to the things that you want to do. And you can find these in Facebook groups. There are tons of Facebook groups out there. Uh, just message, or not message, uh, post in the group that you're looking for um, a friend, a blogging friend, or an accountability buddy, whatever you want to call it, but find someone that you can connect with and have them be a support system for you. And that is completely free. And you will also find fulfillment in helping out someone else as well. And grocery delivery. I have this and I love it. I use Prime now. Um, so I get groceries delivered for free and I, I, it's amazing. I love being able to just go on my phone, fill up my shopping cart and have it delivered. I don't have to worry about 30 minute drive or whatever to get to the store, wrangle my kids out of the car, <laughs> go shopping and try and keep all everything on the shelves instead of in our cart because kids, and then loading back in the car, driving home. You know, it's not a simple thing when you have kids to go grocery shopping. You know, and, and I love going grocery shopping alone, but sometimes that's, a, that's not something I can do because I spend a lot of my time that I get away from my kids working on my blog or uh, working with clients with, through my VA service. So grocery deliver saves me a lot of time. And it sounds like something small, but if you actually add up how much time you spend from the time you are getting ready to the time you get home, how much time you'll save if you just have it delivered. Okay. Let's move on and do something else. All right, so this, this next one, the next step is being intentional with your time. And this is more about time management. And this is the big one. So there are three different things that I do that I'm gonna outline in here. So I hope you have a piece of paper out that you can write down on. So the first one is time boxes. And this is the number one way to balance your life. And we'll get into how to actually do these in the next step, which is actually defining your schedule and your plan. But time boxing allows you to focus on one thing at a time. So for example, you can say, I want to spend 15 minutes on doing keyword research for my blog. So you set a timer for 15 minutes and you 
do that within 15 minutes. It keeps you from having shiny syndrome. <laughs> uh, so, uh, eh, what is it? Shiny syndrome. So that's when you actually go in and you say you go on Facebook and you have a task you're doing. You go down the rabbit hole of you saw a video you wanted to watch and then a blog post you want to do and you're not doing the task that you're actually there to do. And it keeps you focused. So focused. There's something magical that happens when you have a timer. You uh, become very, very aware of how much time you're spending on everything. And while it kind of sounds like you're part of the military and you're a drill sergeant and you're timing yourself, it's actually amazing. It's amazing. I want you to try it at least once to see how effective it is. And let's get into a little bit on how you actually create these. So what you do is you list out all of your regular tasks within a week. And I don't mean this in the nitty gritty. Don't go down to doing, uh, doing laundry or... Um, Let's see, what else is there? Vacuuming the carpet, you know, that's cleaning. Um, writing a blog post. This is about your categories. So the, think about all throughout your week, what do you do? You have, you could have a category of errands, you could have a category of blogging, parenting, cleaning, you know, the, the buckets. What are these giant things that you can kind of lump everything into? <clears throat> and then you need to estimate kind of basically how much time it takes to do each task within that category. And don't worry, we'll cover how to do this later. So you'd get your categories and then you list out all the tasks underneath those. And these should align with your priorities and your goals. So if, you, if your goal for your blog, so on your blogging time boxes, you wanna list them in order of your priority and what is gonna get you to your goals. So say your goal is to do one blog post a week. So you outline the steps for your goal and then you list them underneath your blogging time boxes and you list them in order of priority. And then you estimate how much time each of those steps is gonna take. And at, when you first start, it's all gonna be estimates. And what you'll do is you'll actually test those, you'll put them in, you'll actually start a timer, do that task and see if they, that time is, is accurate. That isn't to say that you can't push yourself. So say you have set a 40 minute timer and it takes you 50 minutes. Instead of changing your time box to 50 minutes, you say 45 minutes. So you can try and cut down on the amount of time that it takes you. Push yourself. And of course, set your time, your timer, and adjust the time box as needed. All right, we'll get into this a little more on exactly how you do this in, in, in the next one. Okay, the next one in being more efficient uh, is to batch your work. And once you have all your general categories, you can actually define within those categories what items you can actually batch together to save time. And here is how you can think about it. Take a look at your list. And there are some categories of, I hate to use the word category again, but here, let me, let me just show you. So there are some tasks within your time boxes or within your week that you take on that are analytical you can group those together. You're using a certain type of your brain to analyze to plan. That can be budgeting, business reporting, or scheduling or planning. Those are great things to group together because you're using one part of your brain. You're not jumping around and saying, I'm gonna do my budgeting and then I'm gonna go create some pins for Pinterest and then I'm gonna jump back. You know, you're using different parts of your brain. That's, that takes a lot more energy. So of course, the, and then you've got your creative tasks, which are designing, writing, and crafts, like crafts with your kids. Physical, which is moving, obviously, cleaning, playing with your kids. And then you have social. And social are phone calls, meeting up with friends, going to see your family. You know, and the social is the one that's kind of hard to, to group together because it's not really something you can do. You, know, you can go see friends and make phone calls at the same time if you want, but being social uses a different part of your brain. So just Think about all the tasks that you have and how, what you think you can group together. And you can set time boxes for each of those batching works. So, you know, and batching can be something a lot more, more broad. You can actually have time boxes for doing keywords research for three to four blog posts at a time. So you can get really specific. And, and sorry, I don't have the time in this, in this webinar to actually cover all of them, but look into batching your work. Okay, the next one is repurposing your blog content. And this is all about taking what you've already worked on and reusing it. Think about that. 
you spend two hours on a blog post and you post it and you market it, you do pins and you share it on Facebook. Does it just sit there and do nothing? You've done all that work for one post, but you can do so much more with it. So here's a way, some ways you can do it. You can take a paragraph from a mobile blog post and do a social media update. Uh, you can reuse an infographic on, a blog on another post or a social update. You can do a roundup. If you haven't heard of roundups, they're fantastic and they perform really well on Pinterest. So roundups, sometimes called listicles, are just a list of other articles that you, that you link to within a blog post. So top 10 uh, uh, instant pot recipes, you know, that's an example. But what you can do is actually do that for your own content. You have a roundup of your blog posts. And that only works if you have a lot of blog posts that relate to each other. So you wouldn't want to do a roundup that includes, you know, you know it's just the best of. That's not going to help your reader. Your reader wants to go there just to find solutions to their problems. So think about a problem that your, your audience has. What can you solve for them by listing out a bunch of different articles that you have created? And do that for your own content. You can also create a video from your blog post or vice versa. If you created a video, maybe you have a YouTube channel, turn that in and transcribe it and turn it into a blog post. And, um, and the other great one is use an old blog post, prefer, preferably something that's informative that would be actually be helping your audience and use that blog post, at least a, a shortened version of it in your email updates or in a new e welcome email series or something like that. Just reuse your, your content. I do want you to be careful though. When I say reuse your blog posts, I do not mean posting your blog posts on other blogs. That's a big no-no. If you're trying to rank for SEO, which I highly encourage if you want your blog to grow organically over time, do never ever take text that you've put on your blog and put it on another one. Google knows and that was a fly. God. Ah. Anyways, but it is okay to share that within an email or in a social media update. Uh, and create graphics out of quotes from your old blog post. So say you have something, and I don't mean literally quotes that you've quoted a, another article or something like that. Just pull a good sentence or two out of your blog post and use that to create a quote image to put on social media or on another blog post. And you can also use your blog post to do opt-ins. You can create an ebook out of an epic post, say it's 5,000 words. Turn it into a, a, a good reference that people can opt into and receive an ebook for. You know, there's a bunch of things that you can do. You can do checklists, that sort of thing. But when it comes to actually repurposing your content, you can do content upgrades and get people to sign up your email list. Okay, there's a ton of other ways, but I got to move on. I'm running out of time. Okay, this, this is the big one. And I know I said the last one was, but this is really is. This is what you actually want to pay attention to. I want you, this is all about how to plan your week. And it's all about creating a schedule that sets you up to actually succeed. And that's building a schedule with a flexible plan. This is, my, is what I train all my mom clients about here. Okay, so first I have a freebie and I will include this in the comments in just a second. So I've included a couple pages that you can use to help plan out your week. And the first one is an agenda. So it's a daily agenda. And it has a column for what you're doing and what your kids are doing. And a lot of times these will be the same thing on either side. And I'll get into that in a little bit. But I love being able to not only define my plan, but also plan out what my children are going to do when I'm working or when I'm making dinner. You know, what can I do to distract them? What times are they actually doing something where I don't have to participate? Are they in school? Great. Now I know at that time, that's when I can schedule things. And we'll get into more on that in just a second. And I'll show you how easy it is. Okay. So when you get this, what you want to do is start off by printing off seven copies of the daily agenda. And that's one for each, week, each day of the week. And you'll want to do this once a week. And we'll, I'll talk about that later. But, and then for the time box planner, what I want you to do is print off one for every category that you defined earlier assuming you actually went through and category, did your categories. So you'll have one for every single category that you do. Okay, so let's get into building your schedule. So take your daily agenda, and I want you to outline everything that is time restricted on your calendar. And what I mean by that is 
if you have a day job, write down those times in your column. If you have appointments for that week, or maybe you have a recurring one, maybe you have therapy, which I highly recommend. Uh, <laughs> and let's see, school schedule. So in your kids area, you can actually outline their school schedule so you know when you'll actually have some free time. And you have regular date nights. And basically this is anything that is time restricted. And that's within your week. Maybe you have a birthday party this week. You know, that, that's time that you actually need to set aside. And what I want you to do is make sure that you write out what you do and what your child is doing. And don't forget driving time. I can't tell you how many people, they get off their, their, their schedule because it takes 20 minutes to go to the grocery store or it, adding time in to pick up their kids from school or drop them off or daycare. You know, there's driving time takes a lot of time. If you sat down and you actually timed out every single thing that you did for a week, which is actually an amazing exercise, you would be blown away. You know, there's this amazing book, I think it's called 168 Hours, where, you, where she actually encourages you to go through your week and every single half an hour, you write down what you did, what you did in that half an hour, and you add it all up at the end of the week. And you will see how you can be more, more efficient, what, where you are absolutely wasting time. And it, it will surprise you. It will really surprise you how much time you spend on things. You know, you think you understand how your time is being spent, but until you actually track it, it's, it's, it's like this, this, it's like you're in a cloud. You're in this cloud of you think you know what you're doing, but uh, I did this exercise and I was wasting so much time prepping food and driving around. I wasted so much time. So it showed me ways to actually be more efficient and find more time to not only work on my blog, but be more present with my kids. And the other thing I want to say is I'm a big fan of limiting deadlines. So say you want to do one blog post a week, you know, that could be something that you actually schedule in, but I do not suggest it. Um, the only time I use deadlines is when there's, it's actually a time restricted task. If you have a sponsored post that's due a certain day, or like today I had this webinar, so I was up late last night. So the only time I use deadlines is when it's time restricted. I do not set deadlines for blog posts unless I need a push to complete a blog post because the previous week my kids got sick and I didn't have time to do one, so I need to get one out. Deadlines are a, amazing motivators, but they're also something that can make you feel like a failure if you do not meet your deadline. And feeling like a failure puts so much fear in your heart so that you kind of fall behind and you, you start procrastinating because you're scared. So set yourself up for success. Use deadlines sparingly. And let's get into this a little bit more. All right. And so we've already categorized everything a little bit. But if you haven't already, go in, uh, just make a list and don't do this on your schedule quite yet, but uh, on a separate piece of paper, list out all the categories. So that's the blogging, it's the spending time with your kids, it's prepping food, cooking, cleaning, you know, every single part of your life, put them into buckets, categories. And what I call these are time blocks. And I want you to be specific, but I want you to be high level. And yes, you reuse your list if you already did this for time boxing. And, you know, this can be kids, blogging, cooking, cleaning, relationship, meal planning, you name it. And I'll advance you. Come on. There you go. And this is the part that will make your life different. It will change how you spend your time and your days. So our lives are unpredictable. We're moms. So we need to have flexibility. We want to get things done. And having flexibility is not an excuse not to finish things. Flexibility is to deal with the unexpected, not to allow yourself to not succeed. You have goals, go get them. But there are gonna be times when things come up. Shit happens. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is define time blocks. And what this does is it allows you to adapt to changes. And well, let me just talk about it a little bit. So we already talked about reducing the failure and everything like that. So it's basically what this is, is say you start off your day, maybe your current strategy is you make a to-do list every single day and say you have 10 things or 30 things on your list you want to do. Generally, and I see this with all the moms that I work with, they get through uh, maybe a quarter 
of all the tasks on their list? And how does that make them feel at the end of the day? You know, it feels so good to literally check something off your list. It, it makes you feel so good. But when you look back at the end of the day and you've only checked off five of your 20 items, you feel like a failure. So don't make to-do lists. You can have a plan. But to-do lists are setting yourself up for failure. Okay, so let's get into what I mean by that. So when you print it off, this is what I put together. If you look over here on the column that says me, that's going to be your schedule, obviously, and then the kids schedule next to you. What I want you to do is, so you have your schedule on here already, so everything that's time restricted. And so for every single day, I want you to outline your plan. So block out, obviously, when you're sleeping, because that's not when you're going to be working or, or doing any of the tasks. But between your time when you're actually, <clears throat> excuse me, have scheduled items, I want you to put time blocks by those categories that you have. And I want you to actually make sure you reference your priorities and your goals every week when you do this plan. All you have to do is, so if you look over here, at 7.30 in the morning, you have a time block for cleaning. And let's see, at 9 a.m., you have a time block for shopping. And you outline what your kid is doing. And I highly suggest, don't, don't, don't feel like you have to fill out every single one. Use arrows and things like that. It doesn't have to be fancy, just so long as you understand what's going on. And you may not even understand my arrows, but they make sense to me. Do what works for you. So as you notice, I've included driving time, I've included lunch for both of us. Um, you know, there's a time block at 10 a.m. for 30 minutes to blog. And that's while your child is doing solo play. And that's when you'll get into those activities that you outlined earlier. And what I want you to make sure you do is both remember, excuse me, remember to include time for you. You know, a lot of people call this self-care. I like to call it self-respect. Respect yourself enough to take care of yourself. It is not about taking a bubble bath. Sometimes it's just stepping outside, changing your environment, do what's good for your mental health and physical health if possible. So remember drive time as well. But let's see, what else do we have? And arrows, I already outlined that. So, and then what I want you to do is go into your time box. So now that you have your time blocks, so within your schedule you have these big gaps that you have these times when you're actually going to be working on something. So cleaning or blogging or whatever it is. Now what you do is you take your time boxing ski sheet for every single category and you list out all of your tasks under how long you think they're going to take you. And of course this is going to change. So maybe use pencil. Um, you can also build a spreadsheet for this and that's how I actually do it. But uh, printable is much easier for to, to give away. You know, there's some people that aren't comfortable with spreadsheets. So what you want to do is outline all your tasks and make sure that you prioritize, use highlighters, Use coding if you want. If you want to show a relationship between them, because that's really hard when you have a goal that you want to reach, but you only have, uh, but they need to be split up into different time boxes. That's okay. You just need to be somehow show a relationship. Do use different co highlight colors to show a relationship. You know, I, in this example, I used uh, B1 and B2 in 20 minutes and 15 minutes to show that I need to do the keyword research before I do the outlining the new post. So that, you know, you have your basic outline off of the keywords that you've actually researched. So for each category, as I said, I want you to put in your estimated time boxes. And remember to include your goals. And these will be what you use. Okay, so the way this works, you've outlined your schedule, you have your blocks, your time blocks, where you're gonna fit your time boxes. And I'm sorry that the language is so similar. You have your time blocks. So at 10.30, when you get to your half an hour blog time box, you'll have a half an hour to do time, to do blog tasks. What you do is you come over to your blog category time boxes and you fill that 30 minutes with your time boxes. And you actually set a timer within that 30 minutes and say, I have 10 minutes to do blog comments. Go do your blog comments for 10 minutes, realizing you are gonna be disturbed if you have your kids. If you don't have your kids, stick to your time boxes. Get shit done. <laughs> Okay, I hope that makes sense, but it, this is by far the biggest, most effective tool that I use and that the moms that I work with use as well. And it may sound very, 
I don't know how to say it, uh, boring. I don't know. But if you just give this a try, try this for your life. It will help you. It is amazing how it can bring you clarity. And the nice thing is if something comes up in your mind that you need to do and you're struggling to stay out of shiny syndrome and changing tasks and things like that, you know, stop multitasking and focus. Take that item that you just thought of and add it to your time boxes. And you can highlight it. You can, you can say that's your next priority. Great. Do not let that distract you from what you're working on right now. And the, when it comes to doing time boxes, think about it this way. When you go to get an opt-in and you get into a sales funnel, and when you get up, land on that page that has the sales offer, the reason they use a timer is because it makes it so that you want it. It makes you aware that you only have two hours to do something and it works. That's why people make sales. They're like, oh my God, only in two hours, I can't do this anymore. So it makes you hyper aware of what's going on. It sharpens your focus. So that is why time boxing is by far one of the best tools you can possibly use, especially as a mom. So the things to remember, and I want you to plan out your week every single week. So when you actually plan out your week, make sure that you schedule in a time box for planning. That's sitting down every single week and planning out your week with your schedule, your time blocks, and any new time boxes you may need. Okay. And let me see. Yeah. So the, I want you, I want to keep reiterating things happen, things come up. Your kids are going to get sick. The beauty of this method is that if you want to get a blog post out every single week, that is fantastic. However, if you don't get a blog, blog post out, that's okay. It can shift. You can adapt. You can change. You don't have a to-do list staring you in the face of all the things that you haven't done. So take your time boxes and fill it with the things that you can do within the time that you have. And if you can't get to the items that you actually want to, if you have a goal of doing one blog post a week, see how you can shift things around. Can you get more help? Can your mom come over and do the laundry so you have an extra half an hour to work on your blog? Or even have more time with your kids, you know, so, you know, especially for people that have day jobs. You really want to have time to spend time with your kids. If you, if you have a day job and you blog, it's almost impossible to find time to have quality time where you're actually present with your kids. So use this system to bring flexibility, ask for help, and just be, allow yourself to adjust. You are not a failure. Just because you don't do one blog post a week does not mean you are a bad blogger or there is anything wrong with your life. And remember that your circumstances right now will change, sometimes weekly and sometimes yearly as your children get older. So be patient, accept that there, at this point in time in your life, you may or may not have a lot of time to dedicate to the things that you want to dedicate your time to. You can just be as efficient and as aware as possible to get everything done that you wanna do. And make sure you always schedule time for you. You are important. Yeah.